In CG compositing, we have two different methods to recreate the beauty. An additive way and a subtractive way. In the additive method, we shuffle out all the beauty passes and then we recombine them together using a plus operation. By the way, beauty passes are light passes and when we are dealing with lights, we need to add them together. So that's why we are using the plus operation. I like this method because you have a good overview of all your passes and it's easier to control. But it's longer to set up and if you have a lot of passes, it can be quite annoying. In the subtractive method, you first subtract from the beauty the pass that you want to modify and then you plus it back after the modification. This method is faster to use but you need to know exactly what you're doing. I would say that it's a more advanced technique. So if you are a beginner, I would suggest you to start with the additive method until you get used to it and then move on to the subtractive one. Let's do a quick example. First, we need to see what passes are available. The layer contact sheet is a really handy node when we are doing CG compositing. So as we can see, we have the diffuse, the specular, but we don't have any transmission, SSS, emission or coat. Here we have an ambient occlusion pass, but this one it's not to be considered as a beauty pass. It's not a tech pass either. I usually consider those as additional passes like the shadow pass for example. For this example it's gonna be quite easy to reconstruct the beauty. Before going further, I would recommend you to download this Python script from Leaf Pictures. It's called Multi-Channel Split and allows us to extract multiple passes with their shuffle in just one click. This is the perfect tool when we are dealing with CG compositing. The link is in the description. For this example, I'm gonna extract all the diffuse passes and all the specular ones. Here I can choose if I want to extract all the AOVs or individual ones. I'm gonna select those ones and click OK. Now as you can see it has created all the shuffle nodes with the right inputs ready to be plugged. First I'm gonna use only the diffuse and the specular passes. Now I'm gonna plus them together and normally the beauty should be recombined. Let's take a look first at our passes. So this one is the diffuse. And this one the specular. And now the result after the operation. In order to see if the reconstruction is correct, you just have to compare this result with the original image. If there is any differences, even if it's small, that means that you have a problem in the reconstruction. Here it seems to be okay, but let's zoom in to be sure. No, it's still okay. You can see that I'm changing inputs here. Now I can control each passes individually. For example, if I add a multiply node to the diffuse pass, I can control the amount of it. I can do the same with the specular. There is a very important detail that you need to be careful of. It's the alpha. If I take a look at my recombined beauty, at this moment I don't have any alpha. But in my original image, I do have one. So the easiest way would be to copy this alpha here to here, like this. And that's it. But you should know that if you want to color grade an image that has an alpha, you need to unpremult first, do the grades and then premult. And this works obviously if you have an alpha. The problem is that if we take a look at our passes, there is no alpha. The reason is that in the shuffle node we didn't specify which channel to use as an alpha. Let me quickly fix that. 
come here, select alpha, same here, select alpha, and then we can plug it here. Now both passes have an alpha. But the problem is not really fixed yet. Remember that we are doing a plus operation in the RGBA. That means that we're going to also do a plus operation on the values of the alpha. The value of the diffuse is 1. The value of the specular is 1 as well. So the result of the operation will be 2. And this is wrong. So to fix this problem, there is two ways. The first one is to copy the alpha like we did here. But in my opinion, it's a dirty way, if I may say. I usually prefer to output only the RGB. So if I plug my viewer after the operation and sample a pixel, we see that we have a value of 2. And if I change my output to RGB, we can see that now my value is 1. Now I'm going to talk about those split version of the diffuse and the specular passes. Like I've said a little bit earlier, the diffuse or the specular passes are the result of the direct and the indirect lights. So if I plus them together, I should have the same result. If we add this with this, we can see it better like that. We get this. And this is the same as the diffuse pass. If I do the same for the specular, this plus this, we get this. That is the same as this. A reason to use those split passes is to have a finer control over the image. For example, here, with just the diffuse and the specular passes, I can only do this. I have an overall control. If I put zero to the diffuse, for example, nothing of the diffuse pass is left. In the other hand, here, I can be more subtle. Keep in mind that this equals this and this equals that. So here the result is the same. Now if I want to control the diffuse, I can control or the direct light or the indirect one. Here I have removed completely the direct light. And I can crank up by a lot the indirect ones. See? we still have some information. If I bring back the direct light, I have this result. And now I can play with those passes. Same with the specular. Here it's the direct specular. And here it's the indirect one. So as you can see, the more passes you have, the more subtle you will be. Now let's quickly see what is this albedo pass. I bring the diffuse pass for an easier explanation. Until now we have seen that usually the passes are plus together. But I have told you that in some cases we need to divide and then multiply some passes. This is exactly what we need to do with the albedo. We have seen in previous classes that if we divide a value by its own, we get the result of 1. If we take a look at our passes, we see that in the diffuse we have the light and the color texture. And if we take a look at our diffuse albedo, we just have the color texture with no light nor shadows. So now if we divide the diffuse by the diffuse albedo, we're going to remove the color from the pass and stay only with the light. What we are seeing now is only the diffuse light. Now I can do precise modification on the light or on the color separately. For example, let's do a U-shift only on the diffuse albedo.
To bring back my diffuse light, I need to multiply it over my modified diffuse albedo. As a rule of thumb, when you divide first, you multiply then. The same applies when you minus first, then you plus it back. Like this, I can modify the color of my character without changing the light. If I would have done the same directly on my diffuse path, the result would be wrong. You can see that now my diffuse light has been changed, and this is not what I want. Take a closer look. You see here? So if you need to do corrections on the color or the texture, this would be the correct way. Now the last step to finish this image would be to add back the specular. And because we are working with the additive method, we need to take care of our passes one by one. So I take my specular pass. This I don't need anymore. This is our new diffuse pass. So we're gonna plus this result to the specular. Now our image is completed. Let's compare with the original one. As you can see, only the color has changed. The light remains the same. Before moving to some practical cases, let me show you how to do the same job, but in a subtractive way. I've just cleaned a little bit the comps so we can compare later. When you work with the additive way, the comps can be quite big if you have a lot of passes. So here to have an example that is closer to reality, I use the split passes for the diffuse and the specular. But the result is exactly the same as what we have done. I'm gonna copy the image and move here. In the subtractive method, you need to know what you're doing. So here what we want to do is to turn this orangey color into a bluish one. So I know that I'm gonna need the diffuse and the diffuse albedo. So I'm gonna first extract those passes. Now I need to remove my diffuse pass from my beauty. And because I like to keep my comp organized with the A input coming from the left, I'm gonna use a from operation. At the same time, I'm gonna add the alpha and change the output to RGB. Now the result of my beauty without the diffuse looks like this. It looks like the specular pass. This is simply because our final beauty is composed only by the diffuse and the specular. So obviously if you remove the diffuse, the one that remains is the specular. Now we can divide our diffuse albedo to our diffuse and be careful to divide after the merge. Because here what we need to understand is that we want to remove the original diffuse from our original beauty to then add back a new diffuse pass in order to create a new beauty. As you can see here, I keep my original diffuse only to remove it from the original beauty. And then from here, I'm gonna start to work on my new diffuse. I'm gonna quickly paste the U-Shift. It's here. And then I can multiply the result. When you do a multiplication, you can multiply this over that or that over this. It doesn't change anything. If I swap the inputs, nothing is different. 
now that I am done with my new diffuse, I'm gonna plus this back to my beauty. And there you go. We can compare both methods. Subtractive. Additive. As you can see, it's exactly the same. But here, it has less nodes and it's faster to do. Now that you know both methods, it's up to you to choose which one you prefer. Personally, I've started using the additive method, but now that I feel more comfortable, I prefer to use the subtractive one. Even if at the end, I mostly end up with a mix of both. Thank you very much for watching. Just before leaving you, I would like to give you an information. This course is 100% free and I'm not paid for it. I really made it with the desire to share knowledge with you. But if you like to reward or support the job I've done, you can give me a tip by following the PayPal link in the description. Once again, thank you very much and see you soon.